Tabula. This one could be game changing. One of the interesting things about the electronics industry is that it's extremely evolutionary. And when someone comes on the market with really startling claims, it's a pretty good bet they're going to be gone within six months because there'll be fine print. But once in a while, the fine print doesn't have to be fine print. It's actually a series of compromises that fit what the customer is trying to do with the part. And you can see a really startling advance in the ability to serve a customer in a particular set of needs just because someone has rethought the problem well. And I think Tabula is probably one of those cases. It's not a gigantic jump in physics or a huge bet on an impossible dream about yields. It's just a rethinking of how customers use the silicon and the tools. In terms of the servable market from a technical point of view, that really puts the Tabula devices in the sweet spot of the market. Uh, probably right where the SRAM programmed FPGA people wish it wouldn't be. The fundamental principle here is that to the design tools, the tabula device can appear to be anything from an extremely fast, relatively modest sized FPGA to an FPGA that actually has eight independent layers that communicate with each other in a nearest neighbor kind of fashion. They do that not by building eight layers of chips, one on top of the other, but by having eight time slices, using that time multiplexing to get the most out of the transistor density on the silicon, while not overtaxing the capacity of that metal interconnect that still isn't scaling very well. I think to set Tabula apart from the rest of the market, instead of looking at the technology, you should look at some trend lines. If you drew a graph of FPGA density versus time, it would be a nice slowly declining line. If you drew a graph of FPGA average system clock frequency versus time, it would be a gradually increasing line that started to roll off a couple of years ago. The thing that makes Tabula interesting is that they aren't points on those gradual lines, they're discontinuities. From the user's point of view, there's a lot more gates in there per dollar. And from the user's point of view, there's a lot more potential maximum speed than the trend line would have predicted. And at the same time, there's a significantly lower energy consumption per function than the trend line would have predicted. Not because Tabula is betting on some breakthrough in semiconductor physics, but because they have chosen a very clever way of making the compromises. Well, my first impression is always to be skeptical of discontinuities. And uh, my second impression on digging into what the explanations were behind the architecture is that this is a very interesting approach. Tabula is aiming at about the same place where microprocessors and custom design chips have aimed and where in some designs microcontrollers are aimed these days. Where most of the processing and most of the data storage take place, where the information coming into the system gets transformed into the information leaving the system. So it's not the periphery or the glue so much as the heart of where things are getting changed. Things like smartphones have gotten way ahead of the infrastructure and we're out of bandwidth in the infrastructure. One way to expand the bandwidth is to spend an enormous amount of money on more pipe. Another way is to use the pipe much more intelligently. And devices like tabulas support the second approach.